wanna praise him, praise him till I'm gone. I'm gonna praise him, praise him till I'm gone. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. Come down to the river, come and let yourself in. What a way to start off a service talking about worship. So if y'all stand, we're going to keep right on going.
as well. So thank you all for singing. Um, I love getting to hear you guys sing. Um, fill up this room with your beautiful voices. Um, we're now gonna we're gonna keep singing, um, but we're also gonna take up our offering. So there's three ways you can do that. You can go online, followjesus.org/give. Um, you can text it to us, or you can um, if you're in the room. You can go to the boxes on the communion table and do that that way. So we're going to keep on going. ever stopped you Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb since when has impossible ever stopped you this is a sound of dry bones rattling this is the praise make a dead man walk again Jesus. Jesus loves you, my friend. Jesus loves you. He loves you so much. I received these gloves that I really love. It's my favorite color. <laughs> yes. And I received this awesome mask that I'm going to scare my little sister and brother in the night with. <laughs> yes. And these pants. And I'm going to use them in every book I have for school. And these awesome <laughs> socks. And yeah, I just love it. Jesus loves me, yes! <laughs> yes. 
it's like, <laughs> it brings this feeling to my heart that there's somebody out there that wants to share God's word. And even though we feel lost, that God is not there, that yes, God exists and he hears our prayers. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Caleb. I'm so glad you're here with us. If you're joining us online, too, we're so glad that you're with us. Uh, we're excited that you're here. And uh, we're going to start a new series this morning, and I I'm really excited to dive into it. Uh, before we do that, I just want to say, man, the words of that song we just sang, uh, our God is able to heal and deliver and restore anything that he wants to. And that is powerful, powerful stuff. And so I pray that kind of as we're in this weird moment kind of together that we just all kind of hold on to that truth, um, you know, that, that our God is who he says he is, that he doesn't change, that he's not, he's not going anywhere, and he's able to restore whatever he pleases. So let's just hold on to that. Before we dive in to our new series, let me pray for us, and uh, then we'll, we'll get going. God, thank you so much for just the reality of who you are uh, and the truth of who you are. God, that you're good, that you're holy, that you're powerful. God, that you create, you sustain. God, you redeem and you restore. God, may that be in our hearts and may it be true in our lives as well. Be with us today and uh, help us to look more like you when we leave here than when we uh, walked in or uh, tuned in. God, we love you so much. It's in Christ's name we ask these things. Amen. We're going to start a new series today called So Will I, and uh, just over the next few weeks, we, we thought it was, would be important to just kind of center ourselves around some, like, just common declarations, some common truths, like, kind of as we're heading into Thanksgiving, heading into Christmas, we just want to center ourselves around some really powerful ideas and some powerful kind of uh, declarations to unite around. So we're going we're gonna to talk about this series, So Will I, in just a minute, but I, I want to ask you a question first. How many of you saw the blue moon on Halloween a few weeks ago? Did I see that? Was that not the coolest thing? Um, Mackenzie and I were driving home from Georgia. She was doing flowers for a wedding down there, and we're coming up over 40, coming up with the interstate, and there's just this massive, you know, just glowing ball in the sky. And I thought, man, that looks, I don't know what that is. It kind of freaked me out for a second, and we realized it was the moon. But it was, it was awesome. And it was one of those moments where, though I wasn't sitting in a room singing, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't sitting anywhere praying, it was one of those moments where I, it just kind of clicked for me, like, man, God is awesome. He made that. That is, that is sweet. And it was this kind of moment of worship for me in our car on the way home. And uh, it wasn't in a room. It wasn't singing. It wasn't you know, on my knees. But it was just a, kind of an acknowledgement of, man, our God is really good and really powerful. And he deserves glory for what he's made. We're talking about worship today. And we got the idea from this series, uh, from the song, So Will I. We're going to sing it um, here in a little bit. But one of the, the lyrics in that song is this. It says, if the stars were made to worship, so will I. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. Now, that's a really cool, like, song lyric. I mean, it's fun to sing. It's a great song. But when you really dive into the implication of that statement, and you really dive into the truth of that statement, it, it's really powerful that we kind of remind ourselves that God has created everything, sun, moon, stars, galaxy, our galaxy, every galaxy, whatever, and that they actually point to God's glory. Look at what David writes in Psalm 19. He writes this. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. Pretty amazing stuff. We know that our God is a creator. He's created everything we see. Everything in our galaxy, everything in galaxies far, far away, he's made it all. Right? You all caught the Star Wars reference. Good job. Somebody's awake this morning. He made it all. 
and it points to the reality of who our God is. If you're anything like me, maybe when you go on a hike in the woods or, you know, you pull up on the beach and you see the ocean or you look up at the night sky, there's just kind of like this sense of awe that just sort of bubbles up in you and you think, what, what is that? What is that? What's well, a realization of the God who made that? The, the beautiful world we live in, it points to the beautiful God that created it. When we see what God has made, we get a glimpse of who God is, and it's a great, great feeling. We're going to talk about that this morning. We're going to talk about worship, and I'll be honest with you. I, I kind of had a hard time writing this sermon this week, and I don't know why. I don't know what the deal was. I don't know if it was because our routine was thrown off because we were traveling last week. I don't know if it was because worship's just a really personal thing to me. Like, I feel like it is for all of us. We all kind of worship and experience God in our own unique ways. Like, I mean, for some of you, maybe it is being out in creation. Maybe that is the way that you you best worship, that you best experience God and you can give him glory. Maybe for some of you, it's in your work, right? Paul writes, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God, not for the glory of men, right? So maybe it's in what you do, you get to worship God by, by how you commit yourself to things. Or maybe it's in your car on the way to work or when you sit in front of your Bible at home. Whatever it is, however we worship, it's, it's a unique experience for each of us. For me, I mean, worship happens best through music. That's, that's how I worship, you know, the most freely, it seems. Uh, growing up, that was something that I really connected with. It was how I first got connected with church and started serving, started playing guitar, started leading worship at, in my home church. And music's just always kind of been how I connect best with God. There are certain lyrics from certain songs that just absolutely grip me. And when I realize the reality of what they're saying, I mean, it's almost kind of an overwhelming feeling. Like, how many of you know the song, How Deep the Father's Love for Us, right? That's one of my absolute favorites. I love, 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 love that song. And the line in that song, um, and <laughs> my mind just blanked. I'm not lying to you. I promise it is one of my favorite songs. But the line, what should I gain from his reward, right? Why should I gain from his reward? I can't give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Every time I sing that line, something bubbles up in me, and it's an overwhelming feeling. Now, I get that for some of you, music is not your thing. Like, that is not how you worship. You walk in here like, oh, my gosh, we're singing another song. Will this thing ever end? I understand that. It's okay. We worship collectively here through song, and that's one of the ways we do it. But that's not the only way that worship is possible. It's not actually the only way that we see worship modeled in the scriptures. God has created you. He's created me. He's created all of us uniquely, and we experience him uniquely. God knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows every hair on our head, right? He knows everything about us, and each of us connect with God in our own unique way. There are some common things we do together, like singing, praying, reading the word. Those are some common things we do, but God also connects to each of us individually. So if you're sitting here thinking, oh, great, here's a sermon about singing and why I'm not singing loud enough, I promise that's, that's not it. Worship is so so much bigger. I mean, actually, if worship is just about singing a song, like if that's all we consider worship to be, then we're kind of in trouble. Because worship is so much more than that. It's not just about a song. Worship is, is laying ourselves down, is offering everything up, telling God who he is to him because he's worthy and he is, deserves our praise. I mean, that, that's the common misconception is that worship is about us, that worship is about what we get out of it. How many of us, you know, you don't have to raise your hand, but walk into a service or, or walk into whatever, and we think, well, that wasn't really, I didn't really get a lot out of that today. I wasn't really feeling that, or, uh, you know, that wasn't really my, my, my style, wasn't really what I was thinking. Can I just be honest for a second? <laughs> worship isn't about us. Worship is not about us. It's about God. God is worthy. God deserves our praise because he's good, because he's powerful, because he's holy. It's not about us. Do we get blessed out of worship? Absolutely we do. But worship isn't primarily about us, not even at all. It's about giving God what he deserves, our praise and our glory. And ultimately, if you want to get right down to it, worship is about giving God everything that we are, everything that we have. Look at what Paul writes in Romans chapter 12. Paul writes this. He's just gone through Romans explaining how good God is, the power of his, his mercies and his salvation. And he says, look, I appeal to you in light of all this, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. 
Read that one more time. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. When we talk about worship, there are many different ways that we connect with God. There are many different ways to engage in it. But if you want to really get down to the core of what worship is about, it's about giving God everything we have. It's about giving God everything we are. Our hearts, our thoughts, our actions, our words, our desires, our motivations, everything we are, laying it down and saying, God, you were worthy of this. So it's yours. You take it. I give it to you. Now, that's what worship should be, ultimately, right? And that's what we should strive for. But we don't always get it right, do we? We struggle with that. That's a big ask, right? Everything? God, you really want, you mean I can't hold on to just this? No, worship is about giving him, giving him all we got. Now look, I know there are times in our life too in which worship just seems very difficult. Where it seems hard to come by. I think a lot of us experience those moments. When life is hard. And when things don't go our way, when it seems like the world is, is falling down around us, the weight of the world's on our shoulders, worship can seem difficult, right? It can seem tough. And maybe this year's been one of those years for you. I mean, it's been one of those years where we're angry, we're, we're exhausted. If, maybe you're not. I'm exhausted. Uh, COVID has kind of, kind of uprooted a lot of our plans and our schedules and sort of what we thought this year was going to be. Uh, maybe for you, it's financial stress, it's school stress, it's work stress, it's relational stress, whatever. It just seems like it's been a very heavy year for a lot of us. I mean, for me personally, it's been one of those years. Uh, you can ask anybody who's on staff. I don't think any of us expected 2020, the year of ministry in 2020, to look the way it's looked, right? It's been tough. I mean, going three and a half months without gathering here, I mean, it, it was hard. And I know there are a lot of you who are still at home, and that, that's totally fine. We miss you, but just know that we do. We miss you and we love you, but it, it's, been, it's been tough. Stress, you know, anxieties, all of these things, exhaustion, it, it's played heavy on a lot of us this year. And I know you're probably thinking, well, Caleb, my job, my job has struggles too. My life has struggles, and you're absolutely right. It does. All of us are experiencing this weight together. So that in mind, I don't want to. I don't want to like teach you anything new today. Like I don't want to. I don't want to preach, uh, preach at you this morning. Here's what I want to do. I want to take a few minutes, and just remind ourselves of how good God is. That's literally all I want to do. Remind ourselves of how good God is, and then we're going to worship some more. So I mean, I'm I'm one of those people that I think if you're going to preach a sermon about something, you should practice it. So if we preach a sermon about confession, we should confess. If we preach a sermon about forgiveness, we should forgive. If we're going to talk about worship, we should worship. So I've got a few things here, and uh, then we're just going to move back into that time, if that's cool with you guys, okay? So here's a few thoughts. I want to remind us in this season, in this space, that even when it's difficult, even when life seems tough, God is still worthy of your worship. God is still worthy of your worship. Even when it seems like the sky has fallen, God is worthy because he doesn't change. He's still good. He's still holy. He's still here. And worshiping him is not only possible in tough moments, worshiping him is like a necessity in tough moments. We, we, don't, we don't get a pass when things get tough. I actually think it's in those tough moments that God invites us to draw closer to him. Let me give you a couple of examples from scripture. Remember uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? These are guys that were living in Babylon under King Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar, he was awful full of himself, like a lot of kings are. And uh, Nebuchadnezzar builds this big statue of himself and says, Look, everybody in Babylon, when you hear the music, you got to bow down and worship this big statue of me because, man, I'm pretty and I'm awesome. This is Nebuchadnezzar, right? And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say, We well, yeah, actually, we can't do that, you see, because we worship God and, like, you're not God, you're just a man. And so, we, you know, it's really not, not going to work out very well. And Nebuchadnezzar says, Well, that's fine. But if you guys don't bow down and worship me, I kind of have to throw you into a furnace of fire. So your, your pick, like your choice. Kind of an impossible situation, right? What do they do? Well, they don't bow down and worship the idol. They worship God. And so Nebuchadnezzar says, all right, boys, tough, tough luck for you. I told you how this is going to go. Throws them in the furnace. And what happens? God redeems them, right? They're not harmed. No matter the circumstance, the situation looked terrible. They still chose to worship 
How about Daniel? You read a few chapters further on in Daniel, right? How about, I mean, Daniel, one of the right-hand mans of Nebuchadnezzar at this point. And, and Nebuchadnezzar says, look, hey, you, you can't pray to your God. And Daniel says, well, I'm going to. <laughs> well, buddy, if you do, there's a den of hungry lions that need to eat. I'm going to have to throw you in that. I don't know what Nebuchadnezzar's thing was of throwing people in pits. I don't know. But anyways, he had a real thing for it. Maybe you watched 300. I don't know. But Daniel says, hey, actually, I can't do that. Like, sorry, um, I'm going to worship my God. And so Nebuchadnezzar throws him in the den with lions, and, you know, he's saved, and he and the lions just hang out and have a good time. No matter the circumstances, worship was still possible, still necessary, still demanded of him. But Paul and Silas, right, in Acts. Paul and Silas are going through, walking around, spreading the good news. They come across this girl who's possessed by a demon. And uh, there's some guys who are taking advantage of this girl and making money off of her. And Paul and Silas, they cast the demon out. They get thrown in prison. And what happens late in the night? While well, they're in jail, they're in chains. They start singing. They start worshiping. And there's a crazy story that happens there right after that. But the circumstances didn't dictate the worship. The worship was still there despite the circumstances. That's got to be true for us, too. God is so worthy of our worship no matter what's going on around us. This, is, this was made real for me earlier this week. I was sitting in my office, and I was trying to think and pray about this sermon and, and what to do and what to say. And I just kind of had this sense of, like, I just needed to shut all the books. I just needed to shut the laptop down and just take a moment to worship, uh, you know, God in my own space, right? And so uh, I turned my chair around, was looking out the window, looking out, you know, over the hill over here turned some music on, and uh, just, you know, the music and, and the lyrics started filling the room, and I started singing things, you know, like, the rock won't move, and his word is strong. The rock won't move, and his love can't be undone, right? On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. You guys know these words. And in that moment, as this bubbled up, it was almost like, oh, I needed this so much. And I didn't even realize how much I needed it. But God reminded me in that moment that when, when you're dry, when you're spiritually dry, the best thing you can do is run to him. The best thing you can do is run to him. Now, this was only like a 20-minute long thing, and I'm not telling you this to say, wow, Caleb's awesome. He worships at work. I work at a church. I should do that, right? Um, but I'm not, so I'm not, that's not why I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this because I realized how spiritually dry I was that day, and I knew what I needed. And I'm afraid that, that, that far too often we are spiritually dry and we don't run to the right source right? We're dry, we're, 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 we're starting to wilt up, and we don't run to the right source. You may feel that way today. I don't know. You, you might be sitting at home and you feel that way today. I don't know. But here's what I do know. God is worthy of our worship no matter what's going on around us, and God actually desires for you to come worship him because he's good, because he created you, because he loves you, because he died for you, because he knows you, and because he wants nothing more than for you to know him and to spend time with him. And I'm convinced that encountering God in worship, uh, even though it's not about us, I'm convinced that God blesses us through it, that he gives us peace and trust and hope. We live in a world where there are so many things competing for our worship. There are so many things competing for our worship. Money, uh, power, politicians, social media, influence, whatever. There are so many things in our world that are competing for our worship. And when we feel this sense of dryness in us, we start to wilt up. Far too often, we don't run to the right source. We run to the wrong source, don't we? And we go to, we go to things and people that are competing for our worship. And what ends up happening is we bow down at the altar of money instead of the altar of God. Or we bow down at the altar of fill in the blank. And does that get you anywhere? <laughs> it really doesn't, does it? It doesn't get you anywhere. It might be a drink of water that, you know, makes you feel fine for a bit, but Jesus has living water where we'll never go thirsty. We've got to run to the right source. And here's the thing. I believe that when we encounter God in these small moments of worship, that he actually empowers us to start living a life of worship. You look at what Paul wrote in Romans 12, that's a big ask at the beginning, right? Offer your whole life. It's a big ask. And we're, not often, we're not often there. It's the small moments that I believe God assures us of who he is 
and empowers us to live out a life of worship. That's what it's all about. We need moments like this. I realized that this week. We need moments like this, and you need moments like this too. And so we're going to take a few minutes here. I'm not going to preach much longer. We're almost done. I want to create space for us to worship. But here's the thing. I'm afraid we go far too long in our life, too few and far in between, of taking the time to stop, to rest, to acknowledge who God is, and to worship him. I fear that doesn't happen enough for us. And what happens is the further and further we get from that, the further and further we get from him. Because it's in worship that we get to tell God who he is and in fact remind ourselves of who he is, right? When we speak truth and sing truth and declare truth and pray truth about who God is, not only are we telling him, we're reminding ourselves of who he is. And when we get away from that, we forget who he is and forget who he's called us to be. And it's so easy, isn't it? It's so, I'm not saying this to guilt you. I'm saying I get it. It's easy because we get so distracted. We get so distracted. We get so angry. We get so caught up. And we run to all these wrong sources. And yet God is saying, no, 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 no. No, come to me. Come to me. I'm the only one worthy. I'm the only one worthy. And you're going to find what you need here in me. So here's my prayer for you this week. It's simple, it's not cute, but here's my prayer for you this week. That you would take the time to encounter God in worship. That you would just simply take the time to encounter God in worship. And I know you're thinking, well, I don't have a lot of time. Maybe you don't. You might be busy. I, I get it. But this is important. This is important. So, you know, it doesn't have to be a two-hour long thing. Maybe, maybe it's, it's five minutes when you first wake up in the morning. Maybe it's in your, in, your, in your car on the way to work. Maybe when you gather around the, the table for dinner, whatever. Just take the time. Take the time. Because I'm convinced that no time spent with God is ever time wasted. We waste a lot of time. I waste a lot of time. But no time spent with God is ever time wasted. It's in those moments, it's in that time with him, and however you worship him best, however you connect with him the best, that we experience who he is, that we remind ourselves of who he is, and that we give him what he is worthy of, what he alone is worthy of, our praise and our devotion. So let's take the time to encounter God in worship. One of the ways you can do this is just to simply read a psalm every day. And don't just read it, pray it out loud every day. The psalms were the prayer book of God's people in the Old Testament. It was Jesus' prayer book. They were written to be sung and prayed aloud. Uh, Jesus would have memorized them all by the time he was a little boy. Like, this was important stuff for God's people, and it's still important today. So this is what I do, and it, you know, what I find often when I come to the psalms is that I can't always express myself how I'm feeling. I can't always express myself. I, can't even, I don't even know myself well enough to know exactly you know, what I need or what I'm feeling in the moment. But when I come to the Psalms, I find that the writers have already laid out what I need. And so I'm able to join in with their prayer. I'm able to join in with the prayer of God's people throughout the centuries and present these things to God. And it's been something that's really benefited me. So I, I've, I've told you about this before, but maybe this week, that's one thing you do. Take a psalm a day, five, ten minutes, pray through it, pray through it a couple times if you like, and just make that space, that moment possible to encounter God in worship. You'll do and you'll give to God what he's worthy of, and in those moments, I believe, uh, we're reminded of how good God is. So we're going to do that. We're going to worship. Uh, we're going to sing a few more songs. There's communion around the room. Um, you can go there. The communion is in two cups, so the, the juice is on the bottom, or the bread's on the bottom, the juice is on the top, so you just have to take the one cup. They're stacked there together for you. Um, but as we do that, I want to read Psalm 103 over you this morning, because I believe that, that Psalm 103 is just a reminder of who God is, and if anything should inspire us to worship, um, it, it's, it's this psalm. So here's what I'm asking you. I'm asking the band to come back up. They're going to play a little soft music behind me. And I'm going to read Psalm 103 over you. If you're in the room, if you're at home, you don't have to read this. You don't have to, you don't have to open your Bibles. What I want you to do is actually just close your eyes, open your hands, and just kind of receive this. 
Because when we encounter who God is and when we see what Scripture tells us about Him, I believe we're led to worship. So just go ahead, close your eyes, bow your head, and I'm going to read this psalm over you uh, as we finish up. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all His benefits who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we were made, He remembers that we are dust. As for mortals, their days are like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it's gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. And his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, obedient to his spoken word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The word of the Lord. We're going to sing, we're going to worship. Feel free over the next few minutes to... uh, to participate with them as they sing, uh, to to go and take communion, or simply to sit and pray. We want to just create this space uh, over the next few minutes where worship is possible and where we give to God what He deserves. So let's continue to worship together. Just catch 
your breath Evolving in pursuit of what you said If it all reveals your nature, so will I I can see your heart and everything you say Every painted sky, a canvas of your grace. The creation still obeys you, so will I. You guys stand and sing with us. Sweet Jesus Christ, my sanity. Sweet Jesus Christ, my clarity. Bread of heaven. Salvation held out to dream. Jesus, mystery. Christ has died and 
Christ my sanity, sweet Jesus Christ my clarity. Amen. Well, thank you guys for singing with us, and thank you, Caleb, for that amazing um, sermon on worship. Um, I hope you all are able to, to hear what he had to say um, from the Lord and take that into your daily lives. Um, I have one announcement, and that is Christmas boxes. So per the video, um, we have the uh, boxes available here if you're here um, at West Town to pick up in the lobby, or if you're online and you still want one, go to followjesus.org slash shoebox. So, guys, have a great week. Um, before you leave, please receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious with you and give you peace. Have a great week, guys. <laughs>